We've asked ourselves whether or not Master Chief could finish the fight without driving and without shooting, but what if one day Master Chief woke up and just said, nah, I don't feel like walking today. And honestly, we picked this topic over a list of a ton of other ideas we had to potentially do videos on, but can you beat Halo without walking? Specifically, can you beat Halo 2 without walking? Since this is gonna be the first part of this concept video, we decided to start with Halo 2 so we have a little bit more flexibility with the skulls available in this game. We know all the other Halos will be much harder because of the limitations with the skulls involved, but Halo 2 has some interesting ones to say the least. And since we're going to need all the help that we can get, we decided to go ahead and put the Sputnik, Boom, and Feather Skull on because we know we won't get the luxury to use these skulls in later Halos, and this might be a little bit fun along the way as well, maybe. But nonetheless, can you actually beat Halo 2 without walking? Okay, so starting things off on Cairo Station, this is going to be our first test run of if this would be something even remotely possible. Now we loaded up all of the skulls that we could to maybe see if we could utilize the environments, grenades, and other weapons to maybe give ourselves enough of a push, but honestly, navigating through this will probably be much more difficult than we initially anticipate. The thing with the Boom, Sputnik, and Feather Skull is the grenades will absolutely launch you, and while in some places we think this will be a benefit, this might actually add more of a challenge than necessary in other places. In the opening room it should be relatively easy, but there were some boxes that got in our way, so what we ended up doing is shooting them with our guns, which actually turned out to be an effective way to move some of the boxes, which is something we needed to keep in mind moving forward, what's going on in the environment, or else we'll get crushed by boxes and die. Cairo Station is one of the more close quarters levels, which actually can be some somewhat problematic because you go absolutely flying at times, making it really hard to navigate through some of the tighter tunnels and entryways. Upon spending some time on this level, one of the biggest problems we ran into is the fact that while we can use grenades to launch ourselves and get some decent distances, there's no easy way to necessarily steer where you're going, and it actually becomes problematic when you are just close enough to maybe make it through a doorway, but just slightly off angle, and you're only option is either to throw a grenade and launch yourself way off course, or maybe try to come up with a different method to get through some of the doorways. One thing we learned relatively quickly is that if we use our SMGs, we could actually shoot the other player, which helps significantly in moving them just slightly close enough one inch at a time, and maybe this could be something we can use later on to help us get through some angles or help us at least set up for certain jumps. While we were inching our way slowly through this first level, we ran into a major problem, which are these staircases inside the hallways. Since they're somewhat centered in the area of the room they're in, it's not just an easy place where we can use a grenade and launch ourselves up the staircase, because we could just overshoot it and fall back down. This was super tedious because we had to make sure that we didn't overlaunch ourselves and we had to land perfectly in the middle platform to try to make our way up the stairs. Fortunately enough, after a ton of trial and error, we were able to navigate through this staircase and continue on. The open courtyard sections of this level were a little bit easier to traverse because the roof is high enough and we don't slam into it and constantly die, but while the open areas are nice, we can launch ourselves around, it definitely is countered by these close quarter areas that seem to just constantly be repeating and maybe a theme going forward through the rest of this run. Once we got to the second set of stairs, we were able to handle these stairs a little bit easier, but we ran into another problem that might be reoccurring moving forward, the doors, they, they don't open, meaning that that SMG strategy that we kind of picked up earlier might actually be something we could use and could come in handy here. So we slowly use the SMGs to shoot each other and push Master Chief a little closer, enough to open up the doors, which then we could launch ourselves into the room without slamming into the door in the process. And in this spaceship room, we ended up clearing out the enemies, which you kind of have to clear all of the ads before the next door will open up. It was a little time consuming as we just kind of had to hop up and down and jump and try not to launch into walls too fast, but more or less we're able to get through this section of the level relatively easily. When we got to the space section, however, things got a little bit interesting. Since this is a very, very open space, we had to be really careful not to launch the grenades too high or else we would fall 
to our death in space. But this ends up being a huge indicator of what is another issue we're going to be facing in this Halo 2 run, because Halo 2 equates for fall damage very differently than other Halos, which means if you don't land yourself perfectly, you will just die from fall damage instantly for falling for too much time. Fortunately, we took time to pay attention to our launches and tried to make sure we weren't launching ourselves too high up, and we're able to clear out this room, taking us into the elevator room. In the elevator room, the objective is to get to this button without dying or jumping down the shaft. So we had to run into some problems as we kind of had to find a way to get onto the elevator shaft to press the button in the first place. We finally made it onto the ramp, which turned out to be a really good angle to slide down that we're building up the ramp to give ourselves enough momentum to land on the elevator and get close to trying to press the button. But then we realized we actually didn't have to do that. The elevator would just trigger on its own once we killed all the buggers. So the elevator made its way to the top, but then we realized we actually did have to press the button once it made its way up to get down back to the door. So once the elevator was up, we had to use SMGs to push each other close enough to press it. Otherwise, if we use the grenade, we would have just gone flying. We made our way through the outside section again, trying to get to that bomb to finally defuse it once and for all and complete a Halo 2 level without walking. This level took way longer than we ever anticipated and to think we were going to do all of the Halos for one video, that wasn't going to happen. So after clearing the section with the enemies by the bomb, nothing happened. For some reason, the bomb wouldn't trigger the cutscene or trigger the end of the level. We stood there awkwardly, trying to get close to it, trying different angles. We tried to launch ourselves on top of the bomb to stand on it to show that we were there, ready to defuse it. Nothing happened. Finally, we suspected maybe there was an enemy left somewhere. We didn't really know, but we decided to throw a grenade around. We found a herd of them hiding behind a box. So once we killed them, we completed level one. It was difficult. One down, a lot more to go. Well, hopefully with the things that we learned from Cairo Station, the rest of this run should be easy peasy, right? On the level outskirts, the opening area, we learned once again that we're definitely going to have to communicate with grenades because honestly, if we both throw grenades at the same time, we are going to die a lot. And this is going to be a huge problem throughout this entire run because we are terrible at communicating who and when we're throwing grenades. This was pretty frustrating right away because getting through the opening courtyard was absolute hell. We didn't want to wait for the alleyways to open up after the hunters, so our plan was to try to launch ourselves over the map and do a pretty big level skip. But oddly enough, this proved to be way harder than we thought because we really were hitting that fall damage that was present on Cairo Station as we would just be airborne for far too long. We spent so long just trying to figure out the correct pathway to launch and hope that we actually landed the right way we were supposed to. And even when we thought we were doing everything right, it sometimes didn't work out that way. Eventually, we made our way to the outside of Hotel Zanzibar and made our way inside. And luckily enough, with enough ping ponging, we made our way through the hallway. We got back out to the other side of the beach. From there, we figured our best bet was to try to launch ourselves into a large open space. And since we know from our outside of the maps video, there's a pretty big open walkway if you jump on top of the buildings. We just grenade jumped up there and slowly launched ourselves from one side of the beach to the other across the rooftops of the building. Then we ran into a predicament once we dropped back down. We could try launching ourselves the rest of the way, which we were prepared to, but we've already been doing this run for a while so far and we're ready to wrap it up for the night. Or maybe we could get access to a warthog. There are marines driving around but they never seemed to get close enough. And, and then of course we accidentally oofed them. So they were out of the question, but then we found a ghost that exploded. But fortunately enough, there was one more ghost and I was just close enough, but I couldn't quite get into it. Fortunately for me though, Luke died and happened to respawn on me close enough to where he was able to get in the ghost and drive the rest of the level home, which meant that we had now officially completed two levels without walking. Metropolis is next. And this was a level we were actually somewhat looking forward to because we knew we would have a vehicle, which would make this level infinitely easier than the other levels, right? Well, starting things off, you don't spawn close enough to a vehicle. And since we have all these skulls on, we launch ourselves, we launch ourselves pretty far. First, we thought we could bump into the warthog, but that didn't work. Then Luke thought it'd be a good idea to try to launch me just right where I could land on a vehicle, but I actually got kidnapped by the UNSC. So that was unexpected. After respawning though, I could get in the tank and it let us drive over to the warthog. 
Warthog where we could actually ride together. Pretty easy from there, but there were some problems for sure with the tunnel. Somehow we managed to keep our Warthog though through to the end, but as we were getting closer towards the end of this level, we knew we were gonna have some major problems because how on earth would we be able to defeat the Scarab without walking? Well, fortunately for us, Luke and I decided to try to just slam the Warthog through the hallways of the building, getting it up to the top floor, which I guess was easier since we couldn't walk. And as the Scarab approached, Luke hung the back of the Warthog over the edge, giving me just enough time to jump off onto the Scarab. But that ended up putting us in a tough spot where we really couldn't move. We knew that we would have to be very careful with how we shot each other to make sure not only we don't fly off the edge completely, but also make sure we don't lose the angle that can make it where it's impossible for us to line ourselves to get to the lower floor of the Scarab. Unfortunately, on our first try, this was not something we were able to do. We seemed to just get stuck in this really awful angle where even if we tried respawning, we never were lined up properly to push the other person towards the center of the Scarab, making it impossible to actually get towards the lower section. So then we reset and tried the same thing again, and after a very chaotic battle to say the least, we actually beat this level. And honestly, this was so many hours of work and we were only just getting started. Next up, we were on to the level, the Arbiter, and can I just say, this level is actually toxic? Sure, one good thing that this level has going for you is that there is a sword, which really helps with lunges and helps you move around and gives you extra options besides grenades. And there's also a sword glitch, but we didn't know how to do it. We tried couldn't figure it out. So starting things off, we had to do some pretty cool jumps to get inside, and we had a lot of times where we just launched ourselves completely off the edge. However, once you actually do get inside, you need to kill enemies and get to the blue ramp, which actually helps you kind of slide down the pathway without over launching yourselves or just flying away. However, you definitely have to watch out for grunts though, as they'll take your shields down, and if you do try to do a launch, you might just kill yourself instead. Also, while you're at it, be careful with those blue pathways. I thought that they would be the easiest solution to get us to navigate this map. I thought I was a hero sending Luke onto one of them, but it actually just sent him to his death. My bad. When we got to the big open room, we had to try to make a launch to the button in the corner that would open the door, and this one was a lot harder than it seemed to have to be. We just couldn't seem to get close enough to the button, and while we flew around, it took a ton of trial and error, but we eventually made it. We had to inch through all of the corridors, making sure we lined ourselves up properly, and we kind of just respawned on each other when it didn't work out quite the way we needed it to to try to see if the other person would stand in a better location to launch themselves forward but fortunately enough we were able to make our way all the way outside to the banshees and from there we were just able to fly to the end of the level but while we thought this level was hard enough oracle only makes things so much worse sure we're getting a hang of navigating but there's some weird stuff going on here we use the flood to lunge into the elevator room which gets extremely hectic once you actually enter the elevator room. Besides the flood that with these skulls we have on will absolutely launch you and send you flying, you also have to deal with the sentinels who will shoot you and they have quite a big push on you and could knock you off. This is one of the sections where having all the skulls that we do have on really hurts us and makes this way harder than it probably would have been if we didn't have the skulls on, but nonetheless we pushed through. What we ended up trying to do was to make sure we shot the sentinels with the plasma pistols to knock them down quickly, but use the swords for the flood and make sure the flood didn't sneak up on us because it's so easy to get launched by them. Then after a while we found a corner that worked really well for us because we couldn't get bounced off the edge as easily and Luke came up with this strat where he throws grenades and I shoot the sentinels down with plasma pistols and we actually made our way pretty far through this whole section. However, once we made it to the bottom of the elevator where it finishes, we ran into a massive problem that we didn't know how we were going to get through. You see, in the elevator section, there's so many different drop-offs and the door to exit this area is extremely small. If we tried grenade launching ourselves, we would easily just slam into a wall and kill ourselves that way or fall off the map altogether and die. Fortunately, before we could construct a plan to tactically get through the door, Luke enabled the the new four flood wombo combo and made his way out of the elevator area, so 
I just respawned on him. But then immediately in the next section, we realize that the flood carriers are going to be a massive issue with these skulls on. And I guess that's a blessing and a curse because these flood carriers will absolutely destroy you because of the boom skull and it's very easy to die. Now this firefight room, we held out the best that we could, but the door seriously took forever to open and the popcorn flood keeps respawning, which is terrifying. But as we got a little bit further into the level, we realized that we were going to have to find a way up the spiral ramp. And fortunately enough, I got a lucky grenade jump that made me land all the way up on the center platform, but we ran into the small problem with Luke respawning off of the edge constantly, and I actually can't move to give him more room to spawn up. So Luke ended up having to get in a position far enough away to shoot me a few feet back so that I could go kill him and then he could respawn on me. This is a small detail that we have to repeat so often throughout this run where we have to make sure we're in the right position to kill the other person so that they can respawn on us and maybe get in a better position where one of us can do the launch or we can shoot the other person to get us in a better position for the launch. It's super tedious. We're not going to talk about that specificality as often, but this is something we have to do constantly throughout this run. We did one more launch and we hit the elevator and fortunately enough, we were on our way up, but now we had to find a way to snap the cables and there were a lot of areas you can fall off and the sentinels will push you off and the flood will hit you off and honestly we died here a lot and on top of that as you cut the cables you also have a chance of falling off too because the map starts to move and you kind of can't control yourself because you can't really walk however fortunately enough luke pulled all the weight on this and cut all of the cables and mind you after you cut those cables make sure you don't launch yourself up in the air because there's no coming back from that as we progressed forward we had to find our way back to the elevator we had to press that stupid middle button and it was so close yet constantly always just just out of reach where we could not seem to press the button no matter how we tried. After a ton of trial and error, we came up with a new strat though where I launched Luke by jumping with him at the same time. Unfortunately, we're able to trigger the next section. We continued back down the spiral staircase and man, is this level long. Next, we have to go through all of these red hallways. They're so dumb and they're so annoying and they just look so easy, but they're constantly these death rooms and it was so frustrating. This section alone took the longest out of any of the levels, just making our way through these hallways that are so repetitive and irritating along the way. And after all of that build up, it was time for our very first boss fight. And I'll be honest, we were really nervous on this boss fight because how can we beat a boss, especially a boss that flies around and duplicates himself without being able to walk? This was something that we thought could technically end our run just because it's something that we didn't really know what we we're facing against. Yeah, but we figured it out. Finally, we completed the Oracle. This level took us well over an hour and 40 minutes to get through beginning to end. So that was lovely. Next up, we were on the level Delta Halo. And honestly, we just skipped the cliff that was at the first section and Luke got in the Wraith and drove forward until the level crashed. Rest in peace us. So then we had to start all over and this time I rode on the Wraith with Luke driving since there's not a turret in Halo 2 for some reason. And while I could have hijacked a ghost. I was kind of too comfortable riding along in the tank. It was kind of fun. However, later on when we were in a situation where we didn't have a wraith with us anymore, I drove a ghost with Luke and he only died a few times in that process before we finally beat this level as well. Getting on to the level regret, this level was extremely tedious. First off, you have to watch out for enemies shooting at you because they will reduce your shields, making it when you throw a grenade, you die in the process. And honestly, we launched onto the middle platform platform, but in the whole process of this, Luke respawned and was able to launch himself onto the gondola to skip the whole first section, which was pretty sweet. Then we got to the section where the gondola stops halfway and you have to transfer gondolas, but this was really, 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 really difficult because grenade jumping could cause us to overshoot the whole thing, so we had to try different things, but after so much time spent with trial and error, we were finally able to make it on to the other gondola and we were feeling pretty defeated but we still had made it past that section but then we had to hit the button on the gondola to actually have it leave and that was a whole nother 
instance because what would happen often is we would over launch ourselves and have to restart over doing the jump to the gondola transfer again and again and again and there was so much trial and error in this process and a lot of dying but finally after manipulating the spawns dying grenade launching over the map and doing a ton of things that was so frustrating we finally hit the button and the gondola started to move again getting in also was challenging enough but we actually were able to make our way through the hallway section down below and make our way into the elevator it was so tedious that we had to constantly inch ourselves slowly ahead with guns and die and respawn and shoot each other just to go inch by inch as needed to do this without walking and it makes us wonder how we will pull this stuff off in halo 3 since we won't have any skulls with unlimited ammo or anything we can launch ourselves with like grenades but i guess we'll cross that bridge when we get there but we got to the underwater tunnels and it was a little bit easier and honestly we were doing this level and it felt like one of the longest levels we had done so far then you have another great long gondola ride but before we can even get to the gondola ride we had to go through the whole process again of trying to press the button to make the gondola actually move now we finally made it across and we finally got inside of the room and it was time for the boss fight at this point we were almost two hours into this level alone which was so frustrating and to top it all off when you're in this section respawning often is disabled depending on where you're standing which meant that we would have to reset the boss fight multiple times now the thing is the prophet just flies around and you kind of just have to hope that he gets close enough to you to hijack because we can't walk so we can't just walk up to him and get on and this actually was way harder than we had initially thought and after two hours the game crashed again so we had to start the whole level all over again and make our way back to the prophet to resume our boss fight and while we were flying out of the map just standing around hoping for the best eventually I actually was able to board the prophet and take him out and we were able to finally beat this level and be done with it but boy was this one rough going on to sacred icon this level was so much better than the last one as we had plasma rifles that we could use for pushing each other into open spaces which is way nicer than using any gun that master chief ever seems to have we we're able to open up the doorways by just shooting at the little towers instead of actually having to press the button to open them we did have a little bit of problems when we got to the big room with all of the plugs and while we could shoot the plugs to activate the next part we had to hit the button in the middle and it was a pain because we could never get ourselves lined up just right or get the spawns to spawn us just right where we were lined up to actually hit the button however after we were able to get that part done we were able to finally move on to the next area that now has the flood which are actually extremely toxic and our best method was just to grenade our way through and honestly for the most part this section is an exact copy and paste of the section we did just before it earlier in this level so it's just a matter of repeating what had worked but this time watching out for the flood when you get to the outside section where the final firefight happens you can actually launch yourself up onto the snowy valley on the sides and jump over the wall to get to the end section of the level however we got to the end except it didn't trigger the loading sequence that brings the game to the next section so we actually had to backtrack and make sure we had crossed through a tunnel to load the next part of this level before we just kind of waited around for the final firefight to end and we just kind of let our elite homies do all the work before this level was also complete quarantine zone was up next and honestly since we're so close to the specter at the spawn we were able to just kind of jump slide into it which was really nice and you do have to watch out for a giant sentinel thing that will destroy your life because of the skulls we have on seriously we thought this level would be easy but vehicle explosions launch you out of this atmosphere so we weren't quite ready for that we gave up on using the specter and we decided just to do need traveling again i did hijack a ghost allowing me to give luke a ride to hijack a tank and it was nice for a quick minute before we had to go to the indoor section then we took turns getting vehicles where we could since there's so many flood everywhere and they're pretty aggressive we had a few hijacks here and there but we were able to drive the other to another vehicle mostly and then we got to eventually the gondola section which honestly we just had to make sure we didn't die before we were able to finally beat this level as well then we got to grave mind everyone's favorite level for their lasso adventures and honestly it's definitely our favorite level from this run 
on. Okay, the opening area has a lot of guys just kind of coming at us, so we just did the best we could to kill all of the baddies, and then eventually we were able to move through the hallways outside of the opening room. Lining up to go down the hole that drops you to the lower level was actually really challenging, but I actually got kind of lucky when I respawned on Luke and happened to fall at the right angle to land on the lower level. Moving on through the hallways, there was a ton of enemies and Luke died, but we later found out that a good grenade can actually launch you just right where you can Tony Hawk Pro Skater through the rooms and kind of maximize your speed and angles if you hit each ledge just the right way to pick up momentum. This actually helps navigate the long distances in these hallways and it was a strategy we kept coming back to later on. When you get to the big open room where you're supposed to save the Marines, this was actually extremely hard to navigate because lining yourself up for the lift to drop down is extremely difficult and we couldn't either find a way to launch ourselves at the right angle to just drop down through the gap. It was extremely frustrating and there was a ton of trial and error but finally we saved all of the Marines and definitely did not take any of our frustration out on them at all whatsoever. Trying to get to the second group of Marines was a little bit harder because we had brute shots trying to ruin our day and going up the elevator took a little bit of work but we actually were able to get it. But this level only got more frustrating as we went on. There's hunters at certain parts that are pretty scary to deal with because you're in quite tight corners and they can launch you into a wall at velocities you've never seen before. We got to the open area where we had to launch through just kind of standing on the sides and hope for the best and to hopefully have a respawn that worked out perfectly enough for us to be able to drop down. We were able to cross the bridge with a few close calls along the way and then we had to wrap around the sides here after the long bridge without flying off the edge and this part was so ridiculously annoying mostly because if we failed at any part in these outdoor sections the respawn for us or where we would get put back in the last checkpoint was so far away it was just this most tedious thing that we've ever had to do just because if we failed we definitely got punished by this game for it and it was pretty awful however inch by inch we finally made our way to that final firefight room and for the most part we just let the enemies take each other out we tried to help by throwing grenades but that kind of backfired when we couldn't find the last enemy to open up the door to the end of the level we spent a ton of time just trying to figure out what happened to him where he went turns out he was way up there just kind of chilling not shooting at anyone or anything but just chilling but however after about two hours on this level this one was another one we finally beat moving on to uprising we actually knew of a strategy where you could speed run this level fairly easily by going up the cliffs so our main strategy was to try to get out of the map without walking and it took a little bit of trial and error to angle ourselves just right where we're able to use the grenades to launch ourselves completely out of the map however with a bit of going for these risky jumps and just kind of surviving our way through it we were able to actually skip this whole level just by doing a few jumps outside of the map and crouching at the exact right spot which took a little bit of lining up but after we were able to get through that we completed uprising without any trouble whatsoever. Then we were back to Master Chief on High Charity and the opening area was pretty easy but we ran into our first problem in the bridge room. We couldn't find a way to line ourselves up with the bridge lift but finally some buggers came around and saved the day by pushing us into the right angle we needed them to push us in which wrapped us around to the next part but it got even harder here because with all of the enemies that come here they will push you off the edge very easily and since we can't walk to save ourselves, this part was really, really challenging. Finally though, after a ton of just practicing different types of jumps and launches, we got something that somewhat worked and lined us up well enough to get through this area. Once we were able to finally get out of this big open room, there was a lot of the same type of hallways we had seen before, but honestly, this giant room here is like the biggest game of pinball where my life is the ball instead of a real ball. Honestly, there is so many times that we just went flying whenever we got into this room and it was pretty chaotic at times. We ended up just trying to find a place where we could stand safe and just start throwing grenades like there were nukes in the room and then just praying to the RNG god that if we could Tony Hawk ourselves at the right angle, maybe we could actually clear the room and get out. This level kind of 
repeats itself, so it was a lot of the same thing again after we had gotten this far, but eventually we made our way to the final elevator, and we were in the last stretch for Master Chief and his story, and while we were trying to figure out what options we had, I tried to do one final launch. I launched myself clear off the edge, but fortunately enough, we triggered the cutscene as I was falling to my death, clearing this level as well, leaving us with one level left to go. We are on the just okay journey with the Arbiter, and this was a level we thought would have a ton of problems once we got to the inside section, but before we could even get there, we had to clear the opening area outside, and while we wanted to take a vehicle at first, we found it was a lot easier just to grenade launch ourselves through since we had enough experience at this point to try to launch ourselves without killing ourselves constantly along the way, and honestly when we got inside, the open area wasn't as tricky or as bad as we thought it would be. Definitely it took us a lot of trial and error and a lot of tries, and honestly at this point we feel like we've had to use the trial and error technique way more times than we initially <laughs> expected, but it was a good go-to method when you ran out of other options. But otherwise, we kind of just had to angle ourselves right and make sure the enemies were dead before launching ourselves across, and we were able to clear the inside section of the level slowly but surely, using each other to line each other up with the doors, launching ourselves through, and a lot of the same strategies you saw us do on the other levels was really, really useful here. We finally were able to clear this first section of the level, and we were able to get the Banshees, once again having to use the power of teamwork to help us both get inside Banshees, but fortunately from there we had vehicles, and we were not going to give those vehicles up too easily because we wanted them to help us clear this last section of the game. So from there we cleared the level the same way any player typically would in the Banshee. We waited for Sergeant Johnson to open the door for us, and then from there we actually used a little pathway that kind of glitches the Banshee through to the end boss fight. You have to kind of just ram it up some walls and stuff. It's really weird, but we were actually able to bring our Banshees into the final area, and while we were so close in this final boss fight to beating this once and for all, not being able to move in this area would be really, really difficult, so our main goal was to get back to our Banshees as it took us out of the Banshees for the cutscene, and find a way to get us both armed and equipped in our Banshee to take out Tartarus once and for all. This was a pain as we either blew up the Banshees, launched ourselves past the Banshees, died in the process, but eventually we were able to finally get in a Banshee, and then we were able to push each other into another Banshee and fly to take out Tartarus, and from there it was kind of just a bit of shooting until he finally died. And Halo 2 was finally beat without walking, and we were really proud of ourselves. Honestly, this run took us so long, we're thinking it took somewhere around 20 26 hours to complete. Definitely a more loaded task than we initially had thought it would be. We definitely learned along the way that the Feather Skull, the Boom Skull, and the Sputnik Skull are probably more counterproductive than they were helpful. However, we'll remember the days of Halo 2 when we were able to launch ourselves across when we try this challenge again on Halo 3 sometime in the future. We don't get those luxurious skulls this time around. But if you like these types of videos, these challenges like this, leave a comment down below with suggestions or subscribe with notifications on because you're not going to want to miss when we attempt the other Halo games. I know Luke's looking forward to this run for sure. And we'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.